Thank you, everybody, for joining us. This webinar will cover the four pillars of optimal blood pressure. In this webinar, I'm going to teach you how to achieve optimal blood pressure without taking medication. My name is Nicholas Cohen. I'm a board-certified family physician. I have over a decade of clinical practice, and I specialize in helping people live longer. I founded a company, HealthScore, and the purpose of HealthScore is to help people live longer. I also practice what I preach. All of the recommendations you're going to hear about how to lower your blood pressure without medication are recommendations I apply in my own life. And you can see the result. My systolic blood pressure is 87, which you'll learn in a couple of minutes is goal. And what you'll learn in this webinar will allow you to achieve similar results. So the goals for this webinar are for you to see the diagnosis of high blood pressure, not as a problem, but as an opportunity. For you to see a lifestyle approach as a better alternative to a medication approach, and for you to focus on longevity, what works in terms of lifestyle for living the longest possible lifespan, rather than focusing only on high blood pressure. And I'm going to share with you the one lifestyle for lowering blood pressure, as well as preventing and reversing chronic disease and living longer. But I do want to give a disclaimer before we go any further. High blood pressure is dangerous, and medications are highly effective for treating high blood pressure. If you opt for a lifestyle approach, it takes time and effort, and it doesn't happen overnight. So don't stop medications on your own. If you embark on a lifestyle journey to affect optimal blood pressure, please work with your doctor. Okay, here is some background. Just broadly, a high blood pressure is defined as a systolic blood pressure of 130 or greater. Systolic is the pressure exerted on the arteries when your heart is contracting. Or high blood pressure is defined as a diastolic of 80 or greater. Diastolic is the pressure on your arteries when your heart is relaxed and filling with blood. Now, why should you actually care about blood pressure? Well, high blood pressure affects every organ of the body. High blood pressure in your brain causes stroke. High blood pressure in your eyes causes vision loss. High blood pressure to your heart causes heart failure and heart attacks. High blood pressure to your kidneys causes kidney failure and dialysis. And high blood pressure to your gonads causes sexual dysfunction. In fact, high blood pressure shortens your overall lifespan. And the higher your blood pressure, the higher the risk of a premature death, as you can see from this graph. It's also well established that blood pressure increases as we get older. If you look at people in the U.S. who are under age 45, less than one in four will have high blood pressure. But as the population ages, the prevalence of high blood pressure increases. At age 75 or older, more than four in five U.S. adults have a diagnosis of high blood pressure. And this sort of seeming inevitability of a rising blood pressure as we get older leads to a passive approach to treatment of high blood pressure. The treatment of high blood pressure is basically you're told you have a diagnosis of high blood pressure and you can either start medication now or you have a choice, you can try lifestyle and then start medication if the lifestyle intervention doesn't work. What I want to point out is that in modern medicine, the offer of trying to lower your blood pressure with lifestyle is really not an offer at all. It's usually you're given within a very tight visit, a list of things you have to do to get your blood pressure in order. And then you come back, your blood pressure is still too high and you're put on medication. So it's not really a choice at all. It reminds me of the movie, I'm going to get you sucker, where the two characters are offered the choice of taking the window or the stairs and neither option is much different. Let me show you that clip now. Now, listen, you and your friend got a choice. You can either go out that window or take the stairs. Okay. Yeah. We'll take, we're going to take the stairs. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. But the point is that giving the, given the choice of lifestyle or medication, results are not much different. So why am I 
proposing that we focus on lifestyle. High blood pressure is dangerous. Medications are effective at lowering that number. So what's the problem? Why even talk about a lifestyle approach? Well, the problem is that blood pressure is actually the symptom. The underlying cause of high blood pressure is an unhealthy lifestyle. When we opt for medication, we're treating the symptom, we're treating the number, and we're failing to get to the lifestyle changes that led to the high blood pressure. And unfortunately, the same lifestyle that leads to high blood pressure leads to a lot of other problems. Acid reflux, constipation, hemorrhoids, low back pain, decreased energy, sexual dysfunction, decreased libido, high cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, anxiety, and depression. Modern medicine has been described as playing whack-a-mole. As soon as a symptom arises, we whack it with medication, and then another symptom pops up. And there's some truth to that. By opting for a medication approach, we're treating the symptoms and not the underlying causes, and we end up with a lot more problems. We also end up with a lot more medication. So a medication approach is rarely a single medication. Most U.S. adults are on multiple medications. So you might be treated with Prilosec for reflux and Ambien for sleep, Xanax for anxiety and Lipitor for cholesterol, Ibuprofen for pain and Viagra for sexual dysfunction, Sexenda for weight loss. The list goes on. And the other drawback is even if we treat every symptom with a medication, even if I could make all of your symptoms disappear and I could get all of your numbers perfect, you're still not going to experience the vitality and the longevity of a lifestyle approach. And this is because not everything that matters can be measured. So not everything that matters can be measured. Have you ever been asked about your vitality or your energy in the office visit? There certainly isn't a lab test for it. The right lifestyle affords optimal energy and optimal vitality, which a medical approach to your health misses. And the other drawback with a medical approach is that not everything that matters can be medicated. We've learned over the past decade the importance of a healthy gut microbiome and the importance of reducing inflammation in the body. But there's no medication I could give you that would improve the health of your gut microbiome. And most medications I can give you that affect the microbiome affect it negatively. I can also measure inflammation in your body. And inflammation is a precursor for most common chronic diseases, but there's no medication I can give you to treat chronic inflammation. The only way to have a healthy gut microbiome and the only way to reduce chronic systemic inflammation is lifestyle. Here's the key takeaway of this webinar. A high blood pressure is more than just a number you need to treat. A high blood pressure is a canary in the coal mine. It is a signal to you that you have an opportunity to improve your lifestyle, not only for that number, on the blood pressure machine, but for your energy, your vitality, your freedom from chronic disease, and your longest possible lifespan. Okay, so hopefully you're with me now and you believe that a lifestyle approach is the way to go, but what is the lifestyle to affect normal blood pressure, but also the longest possible lifespan and freedom from disease? Well, there are four components that contribute to poor health, including high blood pressure. They are an unhealthy diet, a sedentary lifestyle, insufficient sleep, and poor psychological health. So we know these four categories we need to address, but the lifestyle I'm going to propose isn't focused just on blood pressure or cholesterol or diabetes or heart disease or cancer. These are intermediate outcomes. The lifestyle I'm going to propose is focused on the ultimate outcome, longevity. When you live the longest, when you follow what people do who live the longest, you by necessity have optimal blood pressure, optimal weight, freedom from diabetes, freedom from cancer and heart disease. Focusing on how you live the longest possible life means you cover all your bases. You means you treat all potential problems that could arise. Okay, so hopefully you're with me in believing that a lifestyle approach is better than a medical approach. And focusing on longevity is better than focusing just on blood pressure. So once you have that criteria, how do you find the right lifestyle? Well, there is a lot of information out there. And the right lifestyle isn't going to be found on social media. Here is how I've come up with the lifestyle I'm going to present to you in this webinar. 
I have an eight step evidence review process. So no recommendation is what I rolled out of bed and decided to tell people to do. It's all based on the most up-to-date and hardest science. The highest impact factor journals, highest quality journals, only studies and meta-analysis, only of humans, not of mice, only the general population of a similar demographic and only focused on all-cause mortality and demonstrating a significant effect of the intervention. The lifestyle I'm presenting you with consists of four pillars, diet, activity, sleep, and mental health. They will lead to optimal blood pressure, but more importantly, longevity. And this is the one lifestyle. In the interest of time, I'm not gonna focus on activity, sleep, or mental health in this webinar. I'm focused today on diet. And when we focus on diet, there's the foods to eat and the foods to limit. In the interest of time, I'm going to focus just on the foods to eat. So this is the foods that you're about to hear are the most important foods for you to eat every day for prevention of all disease and the longest possible lifespan. And this absolutely for sure includes optimal blood pressure. Here we go. Fruits and vegetables. We're talking about five servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Whole grains. We're talking about one serving of whole grains each day. This could be brown rice, quinoa, oats, sorghum, millet, teff, amaranth, the list goes on. One serving of beans each day. This could be cooked beans. It could also be fermented soybeans like tempeh or frozen beans like edamame. One serving or of nuts and seeds every day. Three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil every day. Three cups of coffee every day. And this can include decaf. And then two servings of black or green tea each day. So there's seven foods to eat consistently. And these are this is the foundation of longevity and optimal blood pressure. I work with people every day to adopt these food diet recommendations. And I've put together some tips for you now to share that have worked for people to consistently eat the foods we just covered. The first is small steps and accountability and social accountability. We have developed over our lifetime a way of eating. And it isn't a matter of just taking this list, putting it on the fridge and consistently following it every day. It takes a lot of effort. People can take over a month to get five servings of fruits and vegetables to be a consistent part of their day, for example. Breaking down these objectives into small goals and also having social accountability where you meet with a group or meet with a coach to assess your progress and continue to add new behaviors is really helpful. Also, preparing your own food. Our food environment consists of highly processed food in abundance. And for you to consistently eat the foods recommended, it's a lot easier when you prepare your own food. You know what the ingredients are, and overall, the taste is better. My next recommendation is to template out your meals. You take the seven food recommendations and translate them into a pattern of eating each day so that you're not logging your food or referring to a list to keep track of how many fruits and vegetables you ate or extra virgin olive oil. This is, for example, the, the way that I've templated out my meals that affords consistently getting all seven foods. And this is something I provide recipes for and teach in, in the program that I, I lead. My next recommendation for consistently eating the foods recommended is to grocery shop for the week. This is called a commitment device. If on the weekend you buy all of the food that you intend to eat for the week and have it in your fridge, then you have committed in advance to eating well. This is as opposed to deciding each meal what you're going to eat. If you commit in advance, you are more likely to consistently eat healthy foods. Otherwise, you have vegetables in the fridge that you're going to have to throw out at the end of the week. And we tend not to like to throw out food. This example of a commitment device, the first and most famous example is Ulysses where he, he tells his crew to tie him to the mast of the ship. And as they're traveling through the Scylla and Charybdis, this two-headed monster and this shoal of rocks, he's able to hear the beautiful mermaid song without jumping in the water. So by plugging his ears, he commits in advance to doing the action that he desired in the heat of the moment, in the heat of temptation. 
And grocery shopping, believe it or not, is a simple commitment device that can keep you on track. My next recommendation for consistently eating all of these foods is to focus on adding before taking away. I haven't shared with you the foods that are should be limited in an optimal longevity diet. And part of that is by design. It is much easier to cut back on foods that are not good for you when you're, once your diet is full of the foods that are good for you. Because all of these foods, the, the, the whole grains, the beans, the fruits and vegetables have lots of volume and are very satisfying and fill you up. And it's a lot easier to cut back on unhealthy foods once you have such a rich and delicious diet in place. And second to last, I recommend discounting willpower and focusing on your environment. So we often think that the way to stick to our diets is to be motivated. And to, if you're faced with a box of cookies in the house, just remember your long-term goals and that will be enough. But no matter what your long-term goals are, no matter what your willpower is, if you have unhealthy food in your environment, it's only a matter of time that you give in and eat that unhealthy food. Because willpower is like a muscle and it gets weaker over time. So you might have the willpower to resist cookies in the morning. But at the end of a long day, your willpower is depleted and those cookies are going to be irresistible. So don't think of sticking to your diet as a matter of willpower. Think of it as a matter of designing your environment. Those cookies shouldn't be in your house. You shouldn't test your willpower. Having an environment that doesn't have sweets in it means that you get to stick to your diet no matter what your willpower is. And that's a lot more effective way of consistently eating well. And then finally, what works for making diet changes is self-compassion. So we tend to beat ourselves up when we pig out. And if you understand that your brain was designed for the savanna as a hunter-gatherer, where if you encountered high-calorie foods, your survival depended on you pigging out. So we are designed to pig out on high-calorie foods. There's nothing wrong with you when you pig out on high calorie foods. The problem is the environment, the obesogenic food environment where high calorie foods are all around us all of the time. So when you stumble, when you face challenges, understand that it isn't you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's the environment we're living in that makes living well a challenge. In this webinar, I hope that I've shared with you the importance of lowering blood pressure if your blood pressure is high. I hope that you can now see a high blood pressure, not as the problem, but as a symptom. And I hope that you can consider focusing on what can you do to live the longest possible lifespan, not just what can you do to lower your blood pressure. Now, I showed you the four pillars, but we didn't have time to go into all the details in just this webinar. This brings me to a program that I've designed to give us the time to focus on these four pillars. And I'm just going to take a few minutes to share with you that program, and then we'll go to Q&A. So the program I'm offering to you exclusively on this webinar is the Health Score Lower Blood Pressure for Life program. This is a comprehensive lifestyle program. It's going to be focused on the four pillars, and it basically is a Swiss Army knife for any health problem you might have. We will focus on diet, lifestyle, physical activity, sleep, and mental health. And the result is you will be able to improve your mood, reduce your blood pressure, reduce your cholesterol, reduce your blood sugar, reduce chronic inflammation, improve your sleep. This will take place over 12 months. There'll be an online curriculum, weekly group coaching calls over Zoom, a private Facebook group, and you'll have unlimited access to me. As a special bonus, if you're watching this webinar and, and you avail yourself of this offer, I'll provide you with an ebook cookbook. I love to cook and prepare fresh ingredients I and mean, prepare meals from scratch. And this is where I'll share with you what I've learned over a dozen years of putting longevity diet into practice. I think this program would be perfect for someone who's like you, busy and needs to get results. A year long program, customized curriculum, weekly group calls and 
private Facebook group with unlimited email access. Here's the program cost. Basic cost, 197, 12 months of access to the program. And then we have two other options, Health Score Gold, which is 349. This is where you'll get one one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me in addition to the 12-month enrollment. And then Health Score Concierge, which includes six one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me. If you're interested in this program, you can sign up at the link or using this QR code. The webinar is officially over. Thank you, everybody, for joining me, and I wish you all a great day.